Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm making this video to show you guys how to diagnose the CAN bus because I'm experiencing a problem on this car which actually makes a big problem for my scan tool to get connected to multiple control units. Let's see what problem I'm experiencing on the scan tool. So right here I have all the units. If I go for a smart detection to see what units are communicating with my scan tool, uh, ECM, No communication. Transmission. Same as story, I don't have communication with transmission as well. ABS. Same thing. So SRS is connected because SRS or airbag is not using the CAN bus for uh, communicating with the scan tool. Aircon, this one as well, Aircon is connected to the CAN bus. BCM, BCM is using uh, another line on OBD2 connector for the communication. So basically what you see here is all those units connected to the CAN bus are not actually communicating with the scan tool. Uh, so it means there is a major problem on the CAN bus that I need to figure out. So I'm not going to go for checking the power and ground on OBD2 connector because as you see, I do have connection on multiple control units like the BCM and SRS. But many other control units are not actually communicating with a scan tool right now. So for this, we're going to go step by step to see how we can uh, diagnose the CAN bus in this situation. So this is the wind diagram for the CAN bus on this car. As you guys may know, CAN bus is generally used on the cars for minimizing the number of wires on the car and at the same time for transferring the information at really high speed. Basically, CAN bus is made of a pair of twisted wires. So that's why, for example, here when we are looking at the PCM, we see just a pair of twisted wires. So one of them is a CAN high, the other one is the CAN low so for example we can see the can bus over here as well c can is representing the high speed can and b can is representing the low speed can so our problem right now is on the c can on the high speed can as you see there are a pair of twisted wires uh, blue and red wire red is the can high and blue is the can low and all these two wires on the high speed can they should be connected to each other so you, these units down here, like the PCM, like tire pressure monitoring system, a smart control module or instrument cluster, they are actually connected to the main CAN bus through this joint connector. So they are already, as you see, CAN high and CAN low, they go directly to the joint connector. They are already connected to each other because they need to share the information between each other. And for communicating to the other control units, CAN high is just right here. And this is a CAN low they already reached to the other control units inside the inside the ip junction box which is interior fuse box so inside the interior fuse box we have other control units connected to each other like for example the airbag the can high one line is shown here because you see the can high over here and can low over here the, the wind diagram at the top is showing the can high connection on one side and can low on the other side so can low gets to the interior fuse box from here and is reaching to the other control units through the uh, interior fuse box and can high as well can high from here gets to the uh, ip junction box and is reaching to the other control units through the ip junction box so if you guys watch the other video that we have for the can bus diagnostic on the channel you already have so much information about the CAN bus. If you haven't watched it, you can find the link on the description. So on that video, I explained what the CAN bus is and, and all the basic inspection on the CAN bus. But today, very quickly, I'm going to do the basic test on the CAN bus. We will see in such a situation what would be our rating and measurements on, on the CAN bus when we have such a big fault. If they are helpful, if we need to go to the next step, I will show you everything. And as you may remember, on the CAN bus, we have two terminating resistors. 
each one is 120 ohms terminating resistors might be located on different components one of them is generally inside the engine control module and the other one could be inside any control units on the canvas like the abs like the interior fuse box and sometimes is located externally on this car this is the terminating resistor the second one which is inside the interior fuse box so we have one terminating resistor inside the ip junction box and the other one inside the pcm so basically when engine is running all these units are communicating with each other through the canvas so we're going to go on right now on the car to see what is actually our measurement when we try to perform the basic test on the canvas the basic test was actually checking the uh, CAN bus resistance. For checking the CAN bus resistance, the best location is the data link connector or OBD2 connector because on the OBD2 connector on pin 6 and 14, we have actually two pins connected to the CAN bus. That's how actually your scan tool communicate with other control units. So you can take the measurement for the uh, CAN bus resistance from there and because you have two resistors, each one 120 ohms, the total resistance on the CAN bus uh, has to be something close to 60 ohms. So the first one is checking the CAN bus resistance, which should be something around 60 ohm. This is the first one. If you are not getting 60 ohm, if you are getting, for example, 120, it means one of these uh, terminating resistors is actually broken. But if we are getting 60, it means resistors are okay. We need to go to the next step to check the CAN bus voltage. And I'm going to show you the CAN bus voltage measurement. And then we go for the next step to check the CAN bus for any sort of short to ground or short to voltage. Let's just start. All right, here's my OBD2 connector. As I said earlier, on OBD2 connector, these two are actually connected to the high speed CAN. One is the CAN high and the other one is the CAN low. So the first thing that we need to check when we diagnose the CAN bus is to check the CAN bus uh, total resistance. So select the resistance on your multimeter and check the resistance across these two pins, the CAN high and CAN low, just like this. So as you see, I'm getting something close to 60, which confirms that both terminating resistors are actually fine. So if my measurement here is 120 instead of 60, it, it means one of the terminating resistors is already broken. And we already know that in, on this car, we have one inside the ECM and the other one inside the interior fuse box. So we need to go for checking them one by one. So right now we're gonna go to the next step to see what the problem is. So after checking the resistance, it comes to check the voltage on the CAN bus. Between these two CAN bus wires, on the CAN bus low, the voltage constantly changes from 1.5 to 2.5 volt. And on the CAN bus high, it's constantly changing from 2.5 to 3.5. But when you are checking the voltage with multimeter, you're gonna get something constant, something an average. It's not gonna change. If you check the waveform, of course, you, you see the minimum and maximum voltage. But when you check with the multimeter on the CAN bus high, you will get something around 2.6 on the canvas low you get something around 2.4 this is exactly what we are supposed to get on the canvas high and low when we check it with the multimeter so ignition switch is on right now i set the multimeter on the voltage and if i check the voltage on this as you see i'm getting millivolts voltage is completely down on the second one Again, there is no voltage. This is exactly our problem. There is no voltage on the CAN bus. I was expecting 2.6 on the CAN high and 2.4 on the CAN bus low, but there is nothing, there is no measurement. So this is exactly showing that there is a major fault on the CAN bus. So I'm gonna turn the ignition switch off again because CAN bus is connected to many control units. I don't know which one is actually giving me the fault and what side of the wiring is faulty. I, I cannot just check all the wiring uh, because it's gonna take a lot of time. So what I do, because the voltage was not provided, I'm gonna make sure if there is any sort of short to ground or open circuit, I'm just trying to see which one is my problem right now. So for that, ignition switch is off. I select the resistance, I put it on the continuity, and I'm just trying to see if there is any short to ground in any of those CAN bus wires. If there is any short to ground, when I check the continuity, 
between that wire and the body ground, I will hear the continuity sound. For the first one, on the can high, so there is no, there is no continuity. On the second one, can low. So as you see, the second one is shorter to ground. It means can low is shorter to ground. That's why the entire can is down. That's why I cannot communicate with any of those control units. Basically, I know that the can low is actually shorter to the ground, but I don't know where the short to ground is, right? So I need to find a solution to make my diagnostic much easier. I need to find a way to actually isolate the problem to some smaller area, then I can focus on it to find the problem. All right, back on the wind diagram. As I said earlier, we need to find a way to isolate the problem area. Otherwise, we have to spend a lot of time to diagnose the car. So as I said earlier, some units are connected to the CAM bus through the IP junction box, and some of them are connected through this joint connector. So basically, if the short to ground is on any of these wires, all right, if I disconnect this connector and again take the measurement from here, I won't have any problem anymore, right? Because by disconnecting the connector, I'm actually trying to isolate that problem area. I don't know which connector is that right now, but basically on the IP junction box, I have IPC connector and IPE connector. So IP, IPE connector is isolating the ABS here as well. IPC is actually by removing the IPC, I'm gonna isolate these control units. And for the engine, a smart key instrument cluster, I have to go for this joint connector, which is actually JM02 joint connector. And this joint connector is exactly located just next to the interior fuse box as well. It means by removing the joint connector JM02, I'm actually uh, disconnecting all the units down here from the CAN bus. And then I'm gonna need to take the measurement again here. And if the measurement shows that we still have the short circuit, I need to focus on IPC and IPE to see which one of these are actually giving me the short circuit. But if you remove the joint connector and after taking the measurement over here, you see that there is no short to ground anymore. It means you need to focus on all these units at the bottom to find the short to ground. So let's go for it. Uh, JM02 is just next to the interior fuse box. I'm gonna go for this one. Then I go for IPE because that's the second more accessible connector and last one is gonna be the IPC. So here's my IP junction box and JM02 joint connector is just right here. All these wires are connected to the CAN and uh, as you see, I can remove this one to disconnect them from the CAN bus. So I just need to carefully remove this part, ignition switches off and the other part, just be careful because if you damage this one, you will have problem on entire CAN bus later on. So this is the joint connector. I have already disconnected all those wires uh, from the interior fuse box. So those units at the top of the wind diagram that I showed you, they are not connected to the other units at the bottom like the engine and instrument cluster. So right now I'm gonna go for taking the resistance measurement again for the short to ground to see if the short to ground is still is there. As you remember, it was the can low, the top one. So. As you see, I still hear the continuity sound. It means the uh, short to ground was not on those units. So I need to go for connector IPE and IPC because generally I can say that there is nothing wrong on uh, engine, instrument cluster, a smart key, and those units connected to the CAN bus through this joint connector. So I'm gonna connect the joint connector back and then we will see uh, what is the next step. Here is the interior fuse box. I have IPE at the front and IPC at the back. So it's much easier to remove the IPE right now. It's more accessible. I'm gonna remove the IPE and then I try to sh check the short to ground inspection again to see if the problem is there. And as, as you remember on the wind diagram, IPE is actually providing the CAN bus connection to the ABS control module. So, all right, let's remove it and see the uh, result. All right, guys, I have already removed the uh, IPE 
and let's take the measurement again joint connector is back on the place so i put this one back on because i know that there is nothing wrong over there all right one more time checking the continuity again one end of my multimeter on the candle over here and the other one on the body ground as you see i don't have the I don't have the continuity anymore so we already found the problem area as soon as I remove the IPE connector the short to ground is already eliminated and I don't have any continuity right now when I check the uh, short to ground between the can low on the OBD2 connector and the body ground it shows me that the short to ground uh, is on the wiring between IPE connector to ABS control module. So it is actually here. So this is the candle. I removed the IPE connector. After removing this one, I didn't have short to ground anymore. So my car has ESP. So it means the problem is exactly between here all the way to ESP control module. So for confirming that the ESP module itself is faulty or wiring, you can just disconnect the ESP control module connector and check the short to ground at this point again. If you measure the short to ground again after removing the ESP control module, the problem is of course on the wiring. But if you don't have the short to ground, you have to replace the ABS control module itself. All right, guys. I was checking the CAN bus low from IPE connector on the fuse box to the ABS. I started just looking at the wire from here, these two wires. You see the blue one is the CAN low and the red one is CAN high. So these two are actually CAN bus uh, wires connected to the IPE. I was just checking the wire from here to see if the problem is inside because sometimes when some guys install the aftermarket options, they damage the wiring inside the car. And I was actually chasing the wire to see uh, if the problem is somewhere here and see what I found. This is the, as I said, the CAN bus is a pair of twisted wires, right? They are twisted to each other, this red and blue. And on the CAN bus low, you see what I found? The wiring is damaged just like this, which was actually touching the body right here, giving the short to ground. So after keeping this one away from the body, I saw that there is nothing wrong on the CAN bus anymore. So such a small problem on the CAN bus can shut it completely down as well. So that's why this system is really sensitive. That was actually the main reason for making this video to show you guys uh, what is the best way to diagnose the CAN bus in such a short time. Thank you very much everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to check the other video uh, on the description which actually gives you a lot more information on the canvas as well. And please don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you very much.